A bizarre conference with Minister Mark Holland lays bare the insulated arrogance of today's liberal government. When simply asked whether scandal-plagued Trudeau should be replaced as leader, the befuddled Holland could only ramble about irrelevant movies. This stunning disconnect from political realities reveals a party cocooned by voter worries. Holland then peddled baseless conspiracy theories targeting Polyev's genuine popularity. This desperate smear campaign exposes the liberals' intellectual bankruptcy and hypocrisy on foreign interference. The minister's flailing performance encapsulates his party's disdain for accountability and inability to govern competently. Holland lashing out aimlessly at critics epitomizes Ottawa's growing culture of unaccountability. The liberals refuse scrutiny and fly into delusional attacks when challenged. Their insular privilege is fueling policies devastating the middle class. Does dangerous drift demand examination as our frustrated nation cries out for moral leadership grounded in the real concerns of working Canadians? Welcome back to Street Politics Canada. Before we dive into today's video, take a quick second to follow us on Twitter. You won't find the blunt truth about Trudeau's endless scandals in the mainstream media. Their liberal bias hides the real stories. But our Twitter feed breaks through the spin and cover-ups. We tweet multiple times daily, delivering straight facts on Trudeau's hypocrisy and failures. We'll leave you the link down in the description box. Tap that follow button now so you never miss our next viral tweet roasting Trudeau. Now let's dive into today's crazy developments. Minister of Public Safety Mark Holland was left flabbergasted and fumbling for words when asked a simple question about replacing Justin Trudeau as liberal leader. Holland's befuddled response exposed just how disconnected he is from political realities and the concerns of everyday Canadians. Completely confused by the scrutiny of his party, Holland could only ramble aimlessly about watching Iron Man movies with his stepson. His bafflement at legitimate criticism of liberal failures reveals the insular culture that rules the government today. Mark Holland's latest cringeworthy press conference highlights everything wrong with today's Liberal Party. When simply asked if Trudeau should be replaced as leader, Holland dodged the question and instead rambled about watching 2000s movies with his stepson. His bizarre tangent exposed the Liberals' disdain for legitimate scrutiny. I had an opportunity to um, watch a movie um, that I thought was a good idea to watch with my stepchild called Bring It On is from the year 2000, you watch that movie, you wanna go back to that, right? Like, you watch that movie, you go, what was wrong with us? So we've come a long way. But look, it's, e it's a lot easier to sell fear. It's a lot easier to say, doesn't things suck? Doesn't it feel awful? And just to wallow in that. Holland's floundering reflects the culture of unaccountability rotting the Liberal Party from within. Like his cabinet colleague, Christia Freeland, Holland adopts an elitist attitude that resents answering to Canadians. His odd ranting came off as profoundly out of touch. The incident underscores the Liberals' contempt for critics of their failed leadership. Holland could have addressed concerns about Trudeau's damaged credibility and misplaced priorities. Instead, he sneered at the notion of accountability, believing his office places him above public opinion. This aloofness permeates the Liberal Party, which rejects constructive criticism of policies devastating the middle class. Whether addressing inflation or unvetted immigration, Cabinet ministers like Holland ignore citizens' worries and shun their oversight role. Holland's behavior exposes his assimilation into the liberal echo chamber that dismisses dissenters. His priority was protecting the party line, not addressing urgent problems degrading Canadians' quality of life. When questions get tough, liberals like Holland change the channel. The minister's disrespect for scrutiny of his flailing leader traces back to the rot at the top. Trudeau has created a culture of cover-ups, conflicts of interest, and opacity. When leaders refuse responsibility for failures under their watch as Trudeau does routinely, subordinates follow suit. Holland is simply taking cues from his evasive boss who shields the party from accountability. This liberal cabal of unaccountability has Canadians fed up with being ignored while suffering constant political mismanagement. Yet party loyalists like Holland remain oblivious in their privileged bubble. The minister's rambling justification for the liberal status quo shows how out of touch he is with public frustration. Canadians want substantive answers on inflation, housing, and immigration failures. Until liberals acknowledge their dismissiveness towards citizens' hardships, nothing will improve. Holland and his fellow cabinet ministers continue believing lavish praise and self-congratulatory rhetoric outweighs the results. With elitist ministers entrenched in office for life, there are no repercussions for damaging policies within the liberal ranks. Holland confirmed that mediocrity and mismanagement have no consequences under this government. Furthermore, scrambling for content, Holland resorted to pushing the NDP's conspiracy theory that Pierre Polly ever lies on bots and fake accounts for support. 
This baseless accusation exposes the left's transparent jealousy of Polyev's organic, grassroots popularity. The minister's dredging up of petty smears shows the liberals are intellectually bankrupt when it comes to challenging Polyev. With no substantive counterarguments, they peddle ludicrous claims about his authentic online engagement being manufactured. Just to follow up on another topic, there's been conversation in recent days about the use of bot farms on social media. I'm just wondering, from your perspective, is that something you're concerned about heading into the next election? And do you think the federal government or the Liberal Party needs to do more to try to combat the prevalence of these bot accounts? Well, I don't know about you, Rachel, but I mean, you know, I, you, you go online, I don't stay very long. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty toxic. And uh, we wouldn't talk to each other on the street like that. And there are certainly forces in the world um, that are autocratic and seek to undermine democracy who want to fuel divisions that are between us and get us to uh, talk to each other in incredibly disrespectful and cruel ways. Uh, I think whether or not it's a bot or a human, uh, when somebody is speaking without humanity, when is somebody is hiding behind, you know, username 12768 uh, and they give you their opinion and that opinion is toxic and makes people feel bad, um, then we have to think about as a society why that's allowed. It took us a long time with newspapers uh, and television uh, to figure out, you know, how it worked. Uh, and there were some dark forces that used those new mediums uh, in very nefarious ways. And I think we're seeing that here. There's too much toxic negativity. Um, an opinion is fine, uh, but the cruelty with which it's being unleashed should be rejected. And I think we have to be very circumspect, unfortunately, about what we see online. Uh, there are uh, forces that are, are running these bots and trying to overwhelm uh, the internet to give an appearance of a particular opinion or a consensus around something that simply isn't true, and at worst is uh, seeking to undermine our democracy. What do you make of the NDP's call to the election commissioner to investigate what's behind the social media post that followed Pierre Polyev's rally in Kirkland Lake last week? What do you make of that call? I think, um, you know, the NDP is, is, uh, is certainly free to do what they're going to do. I think um, there's a lot of questions that have to be asked about the forces that Pierre Polyev is playing with. Uh, there does seem to be, at its heart, an interest to light things up, uh, to create more problems and find divisions. I don't know what's going on behind a lot of what's going on there. To be honest with you, I try to stay off social media. Uh, what I try to do is wake up in the morning and go, how do I make dental care work? How do I get an agreement on pharmacare? So that's really where I'm going to stay focused. Um, those are fair and legitimate questions, but probably I don't have really a lot to add more than that on it. Holland's promotion of this mythology speaks volumes about the Liberals' disconnect from ordinary Canadians flocking to Polyev. Out-of-touch elites like Holland cannot comprehend that a politician could genuinely attract support through sensible policies prioritizing working people. Unfortunately, Holland's behavior is standard practice for the flailing Trudeau Liberals. With no positive record to run on, they resort to conjuring up kooky allegations against Polyev. The minister's doubling down on ludicrous bot claims exposes the hypocrisy at the core of liberal elitism. While denigrating Polyev's organic support, Trudeau has benefited from foreign-funded campaigns distorting public discourse. Yet liberals like Holland haughtily dismiss allegations of foreign interference boosting their own party. Their selective outrage against populist leaders exposes their blatant double standards on outside influence in politics. The minister claims Polyev is manufacturing support, yet the liberal playbook is filled with underhanded schemes to shape narratives and quash dissent. This project their own shady tactics onto political threats. Holland's promotion of absurd bot farm theories shows how disconnected liberals are from the struggles of working people. Polyev's message resonates because it identifies real problems, not manufactured outrage. The minister epitomizes the arrogant entitlement corroding Ottawa's liberal old guard. Canadians crave accountable leadership, not elitist mudslinging from politicians terrified of losing their grip on power. Polyev's growing base sends shivers down liberal spines because it challenges their complacent privilege. Holland's attacks aim to delegitimize this populist wave, allowing elites to dismiss the concerns of ordinary citizens. An old tactic that Holland also used was throwing shade on Polyev for taking a vacation and ranting about how he was destroying their climate and wasting money. Meanwhile, kept quiet when Trudeau took off for his summer vacation. A new revelation exposed him to taking a flight to Paris to attend to Olympics. Isn't that also a waste of money and destroying the climate? 
what I think we're seeing in different parts of the world is an ignite, an, uh, really an ignition of hope again. That you know maybe the darkest days aren't the, the, all that are left for us. Maybe that there are things that are good in this world, and maybe the time that we're in, as tough as it is, uh, is an opportunity to make things better than they have been. You know, I had an opportunity for my mom's 80th birthday to be away and be in the Olympics and be able to watch Canadians compete. You can take a summer fun time vacation where you're locked in a car for 10 consecutive days nonstop with no bathroom breaks and the Conservatives have a plan for you to have that summertime fun and the cost? Give up the future of the planet, right? Don't worry kids about climate change, don't worry about taking action on the planet, enjoy your 10 hours in the car and let the planet burn. But these tactics only strengthen Polyev's image as a leader who unsettles entrenched interests. The more liberals like Holland smear him with unhinged theories, the more Canadians see Polyev as the real agent of change this country needs. The minister's aimless interview answers reveal the federal government has become an insular clique of the ruling political class. Party loyalty trumps accountability to voters and elites like Holland slip further into complacency. Hollywood's weak deflection of Trudeau's criticism proves the liberal echo chamber is impervious to reality checks. Canadians voicing hardships is an annoyance rather than a call to action. When will this government start listening? Well, that's all for now. Do you think there is some kind of a script handed out to every liberal in case they stumble over a question like this? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't, please subscribe and leave a like for this video. Your support helps us continue our work. You can also subscribe to our newsletter, where we share daily uncensored and unbiased news straight to your inbox. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks again for your support and I'll see you in the next one.